Hello, uh, my name is Bryn Hiscox. I'm the owner and founder of Hiscox Cases. Uh, we're tucked away in a, in a corner of our manufacturing facility here where the lights are not too bad at all. What we're going to do is we're going to prove to you that the photograph that you see on the website of the, the guy, five guys standing on the case is, is no trick photography, it hasn't been meddled with in any way. Uh, and we're going to get the same guys to stand on the case in real time, in video, in front of you. And on top of that, we're going to put a guitar in the case as well. So we're going to pop the old guitar straight in the case. Put the old clasp down. And then I will introduce the guys, one by one, and get them to stand on the case and see how we get on. And first off, I think we'll get Big Rob in. Big Rob is our uh, production foreman. He weighs in at about 20 odd stone, or about 280 pounds. Uh, next up we've got uh, Pete, who's our sales manager. I am. He's the voice of his Scots case, he's on the phone probably most of the day. Next we've got uh, Dave, who's our uh, production manager. Dave weighs in at about 14 and a half stone, again, well over the 200 pound mark. And we've got Walt, who's the yep. carpet room supervisor. And again, <laughs> about another 180 odd pounds there in weight. And behind me we've got Brian. Brian, who is uh, my finance director, and again, another 160, 165, 170 old pounds of weight. And this, this lot, still, uh, still standing okay, takes us up to about 460 odd kilos. But we haven't got young George with us today, who was the young man that we lifted up in the photograph. He was actually the photographer's son. Not available today, so what I'm going to try and do is squeeze on the front here and take us well over the 500 kilos. But it's a bit of a balancing act because you can see. There's not really any room for me, but we're all going to have a go anyway, so the boys are going to have to grab me. Three, two, one. Hang on, I've got it in there. Three, two, one. One, two, three. Well, well done, guys. Well done. Well done. That's well over 500, 540 odd kilos there. And the most important thing is the case is okay. Is the guitar all right? So let's have a quick look and get a little bit of out of here. I think it was insured before it went in. No cracks in the soundboard. Seems to be okay. I think it's lived. <laughs> Wonderful. There we go. <laughs> Survives. Of course it has. Um, how do we do that? Well, uh, it's in one of our cases. Of course it is, and we can do that all day. Um, so what we'll do now is we'll take, uh, we'll go upstairs into our workshop, and we'll take a few minutes to show you why we do what we do and how we produce the structure that we do. See you in a few minutes. Thank you very much, and thank you guys. Bye. Again. Okay, we're upstairs now in what is our uh, production workshop where we do a lot of uh, uh, repairing and maintain the tooling that we use in our factory. Um, first thing that I want to say is that um, the, the case that we were standing on downstairs uh, was in fact one of our standard cases. Um, that's the, the, the cheapest, the lightest um, case that we actually make. Um, didn't want to give any false impressions by using our artist case, which is the toughest, most expensive case we make. Um, so yeah, the, the case we still on was a standard case, okay? Just wanted to make that point. Um, okay, so why are Hiscox cases here? Why are we here in the first place? Well, 20-something years ago, a long time ago, <coughs> I was building guitars professionally. Um, and over a period of time, I got increasingly fed up with the quality of cases that I was able to buy to put my instruments in. Um, there was also sort of a steady dribble of, uh, of, of players who had got their guitars broken and they were actually inside the case at the time. Um, that was not, uh, not uncommon, it still isn't uncommon. Um, the, uh, the, the predominantly plywood cases at the time, uh, there were no other moulded cases available 25 years ago, certainly not in the UK anyway. Um, and uh, finally, um, a, a lovely chap came into my, my workshop one day, a guy called Harvey Martin. Hi Harvey, if you're watching this. Uh, he bought one of my guitars off me. It was a guitar that I had built for myself. Um, it was a demonstration instrument. Um, and he bought it there and then because he was jetting back off to Hawaii where he, where he lived at the time. Um, and he bought the guitar, shot off to Hawaii. Um, he got there okay, but the guitar didn't. Um, the case was broken, the guitar was broken, it was smashed so badly it was unplayable. Um, and of course, 25 years ago, I, d I just couldn't get it back. Uh, he was distraught, I was distraught, uh, big insurance claim, but he didn't get his guitar back. And I thought, oh, what can I do? I've got to do something about this. Um, can I produce something better for myself? So I spent um, two years of my spare time. During the day, I was building guitars. In the evenings and weekends, I, I spent, uh, say, two years uh, looking at every conceivable possible 
structural procedure, type, method, materials um, to produce a, a better quality uh, protection for my instrument, essentially. <coughs> I wasn't interested at that time in, in, in actually producing a case, a case factory. I was interested in building guitars and putting them in something which was better than what was available at the time. Um, ultimately, I uh, settled on what has been the Hiscox light flight structure. <coughs> um, I came across urethane foam, we looked at the ways of working it and using it, um, and this is the same structure that we use today. We always refined it and improved it in, uh, immeasurably since that time, um, but it's essentially the same structure. So what have we got? We've got the outside shell. As we see here, this is, this is the shell. This is quite floppy, quite rubbery, and that's very, very important for it to be rubbery. It's an ABS plastic, and ABS has got rubber in it. That's part of the shock absorbency for the outside of the case. Um, so the outside is, is this, is this um, ABS plastic, and then bonded to that, we've got this inner moulding, which you can see, which is the yellow stuff on the inside here, and that's polyurethane foam. It's not polystyrene. It's nothing. It's polyurethane. It's very, very important. Polyurethane is a very, very sp specific and specialised material in that it can be uh, poured in liquid form. So the essence of that, and this is the very, very important feature, is that we can produce that moulding inside the shell. So we make the shell first, that's a typical carcass shell as we call it, uh, the material, the urethane foam is then injected into the space between the outer shell and the fabric, into this space here, in liquid form. It flows, expands and, and around the press of the outside and the inside, and uh, if I just open this down here very quickly. So all these complex shapes that you see on the inside of the case are made in one go, and that moulding has been created inside this shell. It's bonded in there. It will not come out. It will take you two days to dig that out of there. It's absolutely bonded. It's chemically bonded itself to the inside of the, um, the, the outer shell. If we move around here to the aluminium rim, this is where we have a bit of a marketing problem, if you like, because our cases look the same as everybody else. But yet all other moulded cases look very, very similar to a Hiscox case. We've got a black plastic outer moulding, aluminium rim. But behind the scenes, and it's behind the skin, which is, what, which is what, what, what I want to show you, what is so important, which is why we're so different. Behind the skin, just for the aluminium rim itself, what we've got is... is that's the outside. You can see we've got about 10 or 12 millimetres of plastic, but behind... The, the plastic shell where you can't see it. We've got two inches of aluminium, about 50 millimetres there, and that's vital import, vitally important uh, to the, um, the structural integrity of the whole case because it means that every single piece of hardware, locks, catches, even the nameplate, hinges, handle, everything is riveted through the plastic into this hard aluminium edge. There you have to turn that round. Those are the back of the rivets to, to, to fix that particular catch. So if I just turn that around there, we've got this two inch rim of, of this band of aluminium running all the way around. The hinges are riveted to it. That's the, that's the plate for the, for the carrying strap. And then all the hardware riveted to it. Even when we've got, I'll just show you quickly here, where we've got a foot that it's so far away from the aluminium that it can't be riveted, what we do is we put a plate, an aluminium plate that's about an inch by two inches. Um, a large aluminium plate and we'll rivet it through the plastic into that. So we've got a firm fixing there, okay? Unlike just about every other, I say just about, we not, can't find any, every other moulded case, and this is the case, this is our problem. If it hasn't got our badge on it, it's not one of ours. This is a case that looks like one of ours. It's got 10 or 12 millimetres on the, on the outside. I've chopped this up to show you. Comparing it, comparing it to ours, I turn it round, and what have we got? On the inside, we've got <coughs> less aluminium than we have on the outside. And bizarrely enough, almost all of the hardware, as you can see here, if I turn that round that way, that's the lock and catch. Turn that round that way, the fixings are into the plastic. Nowhere near the aluminium rim. Structural integrity, engineering, hopeless. We would never ever do that. Okay? So. What have we got? We've got the outer shell, and uh, we go back to um, the, the moulding. This is another cut through that we've got here, cut through the middle of the case, absolutely feather light. And it's feather light because the urethane foam 
um, it's an insulating foam, we'll come more about that in a minute, uh, but it's a cellular structure. Cellular means it's full of bubbles effectively, and every single one of those bubbles is full of an insulating gas. And that makes it very, very light, incredibly rigid, because you've just seen six of us stand on it, but it's not actually hard. If it's not hard, I can show you, if the camera can, don't paint too close, but I can squeeze the inside, because all we've got is plastic, urethane foam, fabric. That's it, that's the bonded composite structure. We squeeze it on the outside to prove it's not hard, and even on the outside, I can squeeze that, and you can see it moving. It's not solid. That's very, very important. Shock absorbency is really, really important, <clears throat> because if it gets knocks and bangs, you, 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 want to, you want the case shell to absorb as much shock as possible so it doesn't get through to the instrument. Let me show you what I mean. Plywood. Lots and lots of plywood cases around. I could only buy plywood cases when I was building guitars full time. Um, piece of plywood, one hammer, one shock. That really stinks. The shock gets transmitted straight through the hardwood into whatever's in the inside. Could be your instrument. If we take a light flight structure full of air bubbles, give that a whack, whack it as hard as you like, whack it even harder, very comfortable. Doesn't sting at all. Why doesn't it stay? Because it's absorbing the shock. Because each one of those gas bubbles there is 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 moving. It's it's, um, it's maneuvering itself about and and uh, taking the sting out of that shock. That's what we mean by shock absorbency. And you can see, if I, well, you probably can't see, but we've managed to make a bit of a dent in the outside there. And that's important. <coughs> yeah, the case is supposed to do that. If you give it a clobber, you don't want that shock to go through to your instrument. If you're driving in your car and you have an accident. It's no good saying that the car is going to be perfectly okay and hasn't scratched any paintwork, but you're in bits inside when you've hit something. You want the car to take all the shock. You want the shock of the, of the accident to be taken up by the, uh, by the structure of the car, and you want to walk away from it. You can always replace your car. Our cases are designed the same way. If you clobber it on the outside really, really badly, the chances are our cases will collapse and take and absorb that impact of that shock, and hopefully, in many, many cases we have had, cases, sorry for the pun, um, the uh, instrument in, inside survives quite happily despite the fact the case has been mangled on the outside. They're designed to do that, take the shock out of the, um, out of the trauma. Okay, so we've got, when we look at case design, we've got five main design features on case design. What is the lightweight? Well, we haven't found any cases that are uh, price for price, lighter than ours. We look, I'll show you a plywood case in a minute. Plywood cases are great, they're heavy. Um, the other molly cases, they're, just no, they're no lighter than ours. Um, price for price, strength for strength, we can't find a lighter case on the market. Shock absorbency, I've just showed you. Shock absorbency is fantastic with our cases. They're designed to do, they're designed to give. Um, crush strength, that's item number three, crush strength. Crush strength we've shown you, six people standing on the case. I don't, we couldn't get any more people on that case, by the way, which is why we stopped, stopped at 500 odd kilos, because we can't get any more people on there. Thermal insulation. <coughs> Thermal insulation is really, really important. Um, many, many times you'll be driving hot, cold, you go out to a gig, um, it could be freezing outside, <coughs> you put the guitar in the boot from the house where it's warm, and the, the case gets cold, the guitar gets cold, or whatever you get out the other side, it takes ages for the strings to sort themselves out. You know what I mean, you've been there before. So, stick it in one of our cases, it will last longer before it gets either hot or cold. And um, let me just show you what I mean. We've got uh, equipment here because we test our cases to plus 70 degrees and minus 20 degrees constantly. Because we do, we, we, check, the, um, we check the integrity of the bonded structure all the time. And uh, so, we did a test, testing um, other moulded cases and plywood cases to see how um, they compared the thermal efficiency compared to our products. Um, other moldy cases would normally be polystyrene. Uh, and just before I do that, let me just show you what the polystyrene is. That's another case. Looks the same as ours on the outside. But inside, 90% of moldy cases are made this way. Plastic on the outside. It's not polyurethane. It's polystyrene. We'll go into that in a minute. But polystyrene is a very, very different material. Uh, a lot of people think, oh great, it's nice and warm. It's not. It doesn't really do the job very good. Very well, I should say. Okay, that's polystyrene. So where do we go? 
we've got an oven test and a freezer test. I won't uh, linger too long on here because these graphs are on the website so you could look at them until your heart's content. But very basically, we've got the oven temperature rising from 24 degrees up to about 65 or 70 degrees in one hour. And you can see Hiscox case, other moulded cases, and then the plywood at, at the top. And surprisingly, the plywood was absolutely hopeless. The heat got through very, very quickly, um, and it was by far the worst design for allowing the heat to get in there. Hiscox case, our case came out top, <laughs> came out best if you like. Uh, it allowed the least amount of heat through in the hour um, by far. If you look at the situation after half an hour, um, it was twice as good as anything else there. Even better in the cold test, um, surprisingly if we look at plywood which is at the bottom, uh, the plywood, um, the, the, the freezer was set to minus 20 and uh, these tests were done with a, ther a thermo probe inside the case. Yeah? So the case was closed and the thermometer probe was placed inside the case to see how, um, how long it took for the, either the heat or the cold to get to the inside of the case. So I didn't explain that one. Um, so if we look at the cold test, you can see how the temperature plummeted in the plywood case. Uh, much, much worse than either the other polystyrene or, or our case at the top here. And again, we came out the very, very best. Um, we couldn't find another case that was anything like as thermally efficient as our product. Um, you look at fiberglass, you look at carbon fiber, hopeless thermally efficiently. You've got to add something to it. Okay? Uh, so that's thermal efficiency. How well does your case keep out the hot and the cold from your precious instrument? How long can you stick it in the car and drive for before you've got to worry that it's getting too hot or too cold? We don't think you can find anything out there that's better than this. The reason is this is a technical product. It's not just a packaging foam. It's been designed to do this job. It is an insulating foam. The cells inside there have got an insulating gas in them. They do that so they do their job. Okay? Um, overall structural integrity, we can jump on the things. So, what have we got as an alternative? Uh, we mentioned plywood. And um, I've got a plywood case here. Plywood. Uh, not just a smooth edit point there, but uh, just bear with us, we've got a few minutes to go, yeah? Um, plywood, good case, it's been around forever. Um, weight for weight, lightweight, no, they're not particularly lightweight. Um, take a Hiscox Pro 2 case, the same size as this. This case is a good half to three quarters of a kilo heavier, and it's a fairly basic case at that. Um, as you can see, inside, almost no padding, it's heavier than a Pro 2 case. Um, so, shock absorbency, very poor. Um, unless it's got lots of padding inside. As I say, just hitting that piece of plywood with a hammer, the shock will go straight through. Beware of the neck rest position. Um, in a Hiscox case, the neck rest position is right up by the headstock. It's there for a reason, um, and, the, and the neck is, is held quite firmly at that point. You support a guitar neck this far back, and the case is, is hit in any way, shape, or form, the chances are the neck will whiplash inside, and the headstock breaks off. I've seen it many, many times, so be careful. Um, crush strength. Again, this case is heavier than a Pro 2 case, but as you can see from that, crush strength is not that good. You put one foot on there, as it happened to a friend of mine, and he broke his own guitar in his own bedroom by putting a foot in the middle of his case. Didn't intend to, but <laughs> rather than his ass, but Thermal insulation. Surprisingly enough, the poorest of the cases that we were able to test. Um, in, you can see the graphs, but uh, just as a, a very quick pointer, uh, in the freezer test, um, it took the plywood case 14 minutes to get from ambient to zero. It took the Hiscox case 42 minutes. In other words, the Hiscox case is three times better sound, sound, thermal insulation than the plywood case. Okay? So, plywood cases, okay, but just beware and be careful what you're buying. Make sure it's well padded inside. 90% or thereabouts of cases that aren't ours on the market, certainly here in the UK, are made this way. This is a problem that we have because they look similar to a Hiscox case. But let me remind you, if it hasn't got our badge on the side, it won't be one of ours and it won't be made this way. It will probably be made this way. And this way is using polystyrene for the inner moulding, not polyurethane. This is polystyrene. It's a packaging product. It's not an engineering product, really. And why isn't it an engineering product? Because it can't be made other than in a big machine. 
This looks quite neat and tidy inside, but give that a tug, and it, believe me, it didn't take much to get it out of there. It comes out separately, and the reason it came out was because it's been made separately. Polystyrene can only be made in a big polystyrene moulding machine. The polystyrene moulding cannot be made inside this shell. It has to be glued in afterwards. And by gluing it in afterwards, the only way they can get it in there is it's got to be smaller than the inside edge of this aluminium rim. Otherwise, they wouldn't be able to get it in there. Then once they've got it in, they can only glue it along the top face, and that will vary from manufacturer to manufacturer. They can't bond it around the edge because there has to be a gap. And that gap is quite substantial, otherwise it wouldn't get it in there. Um, and what does that mean? If we can just have a look at this hand, this is a brand new case, it's not being used at all. You see the flexibility of that, that important part of the case, which is where you're going to be pulling on it all the time, is already loose. Well, it was never fixed because they can't bond it in there. And uh, the situation does get worse because <coughs> behind the moulding, you've got a pretty poor structure. In fact, you've got a very poor structure. If we can just pan into this corner here and also show you this, this other one we've got there, it's a different manufacturer, similar problem. We've got a lift, less aluminium on the inside than we have on the outside. We've, these are the rivets which fix the hinge, the foot. There's the catch uh, of a different case, but the result's the same. All the fixings for the hardware are into the plastic with no support at all. Um, very poor engineering practice. Uh, we would never, ever do that. Um, in fact, when we've got a situation uh, in one or two areas of our cases, and you can have a look at this, this is one of ours, of course. Notice the, the uh, inch of aluminium behind here. Uh, where we've got a foot which we can't rivet to the aluminium room because it's got to be further away, we will put a one inch by two inch plate of aluminium behind the plastic and we'll rivet to that. Okay, as a, as, a, as a more permanent fixture. So, structural integrity, pretty poor. Um, probably about as poor as it gets, to be honest. But they do have a place because they are low-cost cases. Um, and that's, the, uh, that's the, the, the part of the market they fit into. But beware, because um, you get what you pay for. Yeah? So, um, what have we got with this sort of design? Lightweight, they're not any lighter than our products, uh, they are usually slightly heavier. Shock absorbance is not too bad, um, but you've got to be careful about small details about neck rests because they're normally not in the right place. Um, crush strength, absolutely hopeless, and that's because they haven't got the composite bonded structure. Thermal insulation, um, not anything like as good as you, you, you'd have thought. Um, in the freezer test, um, time taken to get from ambient down to zero, uh, these cases took 25 minutes as opposed to the Hiscox took 42 minutes. We were nearly twice as good. Okay? And that's using polystyrene, which everybody thinks is a good insulator. It isn't. It hasn't got an insulating gas in the cell structure, whereas ours has. Um, so, what have we got? Um, other moulding cases, there are two other manufacturers that we know of that actually do use polyurethane, so we want to be fair to everybody. Um, and they're made this way. Again, they look similar to a Hiscox case, but beware, if it hasn't got our badge on, it won't be one of ours, it won't be made this way. Some of them are made this way. Polyurethane foam, poor quality, air holes everywhere. The reason there are air holes everywhere, or one of the reasons, is that behind the, um, the, uh, the urethane foam in, in between the fabric is another plastic moulding. As we kind of open that out, as you can see here. Apart from the fact this is a very, very, very poor quality foam, you've got large, uh, dark areas, light areas, large cells, small cells. That will be very unstable where temperature variation is concerned. The moulding will tend to move all over the place. We know that because we are specialists in urethane foam. Um, so, apart from the poor quality foam moulding, behind the fabric where the customer can't see it is this other plastic moulding, which makes the case heavier, but most importantly, it makes the inside of the case as hard as the outside of the case. We have two customers that used to buy these cases. They no longer buy them because they were getting, uh, they were getting their instruments broken inside the case. That's why it's too damn hard inside. And if we look at the aluminium rim again, we've got less aluminium on the inside than we have on the outside. I'll swing that round slightly so you can see it. And we've got fixings there and all the other fixings as well or most of them, 
riveted into the plastic only. They're not riveted into the hard metal edge that we have. And on the outside, and you can say these fixings here, look, there we are, into the plastic. Um, there's no metal behind there at all. Bond, composite bond structural integrity. We've torn this back earlier to save time. Um, and we've got, again, very poor quality uh, urethane foam there, but that's super smooth. That's smooth because it's not bonded to it. Um, they have uh, applied some adhesive down the edges, which is sort of the, the opposite to the other moulded cases we saw, but the whole of the top face of the case, the whole of the underside of the case is completely free um, and no bonding at all, no structural integrity, no longevity, none at all. Compare that, how easy that comes apart, to the Hiscox case, we've torn this apart, there is the bonding, that took some tearing off because it's glued itself to it, every square millimetre of the plastic shell, the urethane has bonded itself to it. I'm getting my fingers under there, you see, I can't get that off at all. Compare that to that. That's what a proper composite moulded structure is. It's um, it's, it, the structural integrity is the, the, the sum of the parts. Um, that's the composite moulding of the Hiscox case compared to a N O N case. What else have we got on the market? If you go up market slightly, you've got you hit sort of fiberglass cases, um, but you can't compare like for like because they are probably around about three times here in the UK anyway. They're, they're three times the price of our Pro Two case. Um, and if we look at the sort of five to, to, uh, critical points of case design, we've got lightweight, now they're heavier. Um, shock absorbency is pretty poor, unless you've got lots of foam padding. So if you're going to buy a fiberglass case, make sure it's got lots of foam padding around the instrument. Crush strength, you will never get that sort of crush strength in a fiberglass case, unless it's four times the weight of one of ours, um, quite seriously. Thermal insulation is no good at all in fiberglass and carbon fibre. You, you've got to add something to it to, to get that thermal insulation there. Uh, up market for, uh, further, um, to the top of the range as we know it is, is carbon fibre. Um, but carbon fibre, said, beware of that because uh, you're looking at six, seven times the price of our Pro 2 case um, before you get any lightweight benefits. Uh, the shock absorbency will be poor because carbon fibre is wonderful stuff, it's so hard. Uh, but if you're going to stop that, any bashes and bangers getting through to your precious instrument, and you want something extra special inside to stop those shocks getting through. Um, thermal insulation, not good at all. Uh, again, you'll need to add something to the carbon fibre um, to, to give that, that thermal barrier there. So, um, we believe that in the price range that we operate, um, we manufacture the very best engineered lightweight composite molded cases on the market, um, bar none, basically. Um, but don't take my word for it. Have a look elsewhere on the website. Um, we supply 80, 90, 95 or so um, manufacturers, makers of fine instruments worldwide, and a lot of them have put little testimonials on the website just explaining why they buy our cases, why they choose to buy Hiscox cases. We don't make them buy our cases. Our cases are not the cheapest on the market. Um, and uh, have a read of that. And I hope that um, I've uh, given you enough information to, so that you can make an informed decision on your next case purchase, and uh, we hope that it's a Hiscox case. Thank you very much for your time.